Welcome to another GED math video from ultimateged.com. In this video, we will be looking at some must-know, important GED math test questions. These questions are specifically selected to help you develop the skills you need to pass the GED with ease. It's important that you watch all the videos in this series. We will put a playlist link in the description and the comment section. Check it out. Let's dive in. Given the equation y equals 2x squared minus 5 times 2x minus 1 plus 3, find y when x equals 4. a. 23 b. 11 c. 0 d. 5 The work here is being able to replace values and also using the order of operations. We will replace the x with 4. So we have y equals 2 times 4 squared minus 5 times 2 times 4, minus 1, plus 3. Here is the order of operations. You can check out our video on order of operations if you need a detailed lesson. With the order of operations, we will perform the parenthesis first. So we have 2 times 4, which is 8. This minus 1. This will give us 7. Next, we will do the exponent. We have 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. Next, we will do all the multiplications. We have 2 times 16. This is 32. Then we have 5 times 7. This is 35. Then finally we will do the addition and subtraction. 32 minus 35 is negative 3. Plus 3 is 0. So the correct answer is option C, 0. Please encourage us to post more videos by liking, sharing, and subscribing. We really appreciate it. Based on the bar chart, which quarter of the year showed the highest total sales? A. January to March B. April to June C. July to September D. October to December This is pretty straightforward. The work here is being able to accurately eyeball or estimate the values of the graph. Eyeballing is a very great way to solve questions on graph. However, it is not the best method for everyone. Comparing the first quarter to the second quarter, we will see that all sales were 6,000 or below for the first quarter and all sales were above 6,000 for the second quarter. So January to March is definitely not the highest. Now, comparing the second quarter and the third quarter, the value for the April and September are about the same. That is about 7,000. The value for May and August are also about the same. That is 8,000. Our work is therefore comparing June and July. Clearly, July is more than June. Since July is more than June, we can say the second quarter cannot be the largest sale. Now, we compare the third quarter and the fourth quarter. This is where there is a little bit of work. I will cut off this part and place it here. By doing that, the September and November will be the same. August and December will also be the same. So we just have to compare July and October. We can see that July is more than October. This means the third quarter had the greatest sales. So the correct answer is option C, July to September. Eyeballing might not work for everyone. If that is you, then you can use estimates for each of the bars. Add the months in every quarter and compare. Example, we can estimate the sales for July as 8,500, the sales for August as 8,000, the sales for September as 7,000. Add these together to get 23,500 in sales for July to September. A teacher is planning an art project where each student needs four sheets of colored paper. Additionally, the teacher requires an extra 50 sheets for display backgrounds and other decorative elements. If S represents the number of students in the class and P represents the total number of sheets of paper needed, which equation best describes the relationship between the number of sheets of paper P and the number of students S? A. P equals 4S plus 50. B. P equals 50S plus 4. C. P equals 4 times S plus 50. D, P equals S plus 54. 
To pass the GED math test, you need to be able to translate paragraphs into equations. These equations are usually two-step equations. Let's break it down. Questions like this typically involve a fixed part and a variable part. First, let's think about what the teacher needs. Every student needs four sheets of colored paper for the project. So, if you have S students, you would need four sheets for each student. This means you multiply the number of students, S, by four to get four S. This is the variable part. Next, the teacher also needs 50 extra sheets for the display backgrounds and other decorations. This is a fixed number and doesn't depend on the number of students. Now, if we put these two parts together, the total number of sheets of paper needed, P, would be the sheets for the students, 4S, plus the extra 50 sheets. So, the correct answer is option A, P equals 4S, plus 50. A rectangular park is 150 meters long and 100 meters wide. If a path of 5 meters wide is built around the inside of the park, what is the area of the remaining park after the path is built? A. 13,600 square meters B. 12,600 square meters C. 11,600 square meters D. 10,600 square meters for geometry word problems, it is good practice to have a diagram so you can picture what the question is asking. We have looked at different versions of this question, please check them out and compare them. We have a rectangular park. The length is 150 meters and the width is 100 meters. The 5 meter path is built inside. So we are subtracting 5 from all the sides. Area of a rectangle is length times width. The new length of the park will be the 150 minus this 5 and this 5. So the length is 150 minus 10. This is 140 meters. The new width is 100 minus this 5 and this 5. The width is 100 minus 10. This is 90 meters. We multiply. 140 times 90 is 12,600. So the correct answer is B. 12,600 square meters. Solve for x in the equation x minus 2 over 3 plus x plus 5 over 4 equals 7 a 7 b 11 c 9 d 10 one of the most important test-taking skills is to know when you don't need to do a full-fledged calculation. The best way to solve this question is to replace the x with the options in the multiple-choice answers and find out which value is true. Let's start with the 7. We have 7 minus 2, which is 5. Then we have 7 plus 5, which is 12. We have 5 over 3 plus 12 over 4. You add this on the calculator to get 14 over 3. This is not 7, so option A is wrong. We can try option B. We have 11 minus 2. This is 9. Then we have 11 plus 5. This is 16. We have 9 over 3 plus 16 over 4. We add this on the calculator to get 7. We could easily done this without a calculator also. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Add the 3 and the 4 to get 7. Since we had 7, which is the expected answer, option B is the correct answer. If you choose not to use the answer options, this is your alternative solution. For questions like this, our first work is to get rid of the denominators. We will find the least common multiple of the denominators. This is also known as the least common denominator. The denominators are 3 and 4. You can check out ultimateged.com for three different ways of finding the LCDs and pick the best one for you. For this question, we will just use the multiples idea. The multiples of 3 is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and so on. 
The multiples of 4 is 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. We can see that 12 is the smallest number that is common to both of them. So 12 is the LCM or LCD in this case. After finding the LCD, we multiply each of the terms by the LCD 12. Next, we will remove the fractions by reducing the terms. For the first fraction, 12 divided by 3 is 4. For the second fraction, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now, let's expand and simplify. We multiply each term in the parenthesis by the term outside. We have 4 times x, this is 4x. Then we have 4 times minus 2, this is minus 8. Next, we have 3 times x, this is 3x. Then we have 3 times 5, this is 15. 12 times 7 is 8 of 4. Next, let's simplify by adding like terms. We can add the 4x and 3x to get 7x. Also, negative 8 plus 15 will be 7. We now have a simple two-step equation. To find x, we will first subtract 7 from both sides. The 7 will cancel out. 8 of 4 minus 7 is 77. Next, we will divide both sides by 7. The 7 will cancel out. 77 divided by 7 is 11. So x equals 11. The correct answer is therefore option B, 11. Before you go to the next video, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so yet. We have a lot of videos coming up. Check out the playlist, like, and share. Thank you. See you in the next video.